So now that we have the basics of layout a page, the head tag and the body tag, we have some organizational structure within our body tag with heading tags and paragraph tags and be able to modify some of those internally with things like strong and emphasis. Now we want to start looking at some other ways to start grouping and organizing our page together. The first thing we're going to look at is the header tag. And our header tag is not to be confused with the head tag or headings tag. And I know those names are all very similar, but they all serve a different purpose. The header tag is to provide a header for a given section. Now we can have headers for the whole page or for sections within our website. And we'll look at those later. We're just going to look at an overall header for our page. Now to do that, I'm going to come here into my body tag and I'm just going to create a header tag. You know, notice that there is a closing tag as well. Now, if I save this and come back to my sample file and reload this, you're going to notice that nothing changed. And you might say, well, did I actually get in? You reload a couple of times and the answer is no, nothing changed. Your header tag is a logical organization and grouping type of tag. <clears throat> It is there simply to make it so that you can relate your content easier. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to put some stuff inside of our header tag and then look at how we're going to style it. Since this is for my page header, I'm going to add a class attribute and I'm going to call this page dash header. This way, if I want to style it different than headers for subsections later on when they come around, we can easily do that. I don't want to put a page or maybe even a site title. And so in this case, our header, you might want to think of as like a masthead on a newspaper or magazine where it includes the newspaper and the volume number, article page, dates, those types of things. So in our case, we're going to put a title and we already have an H1 tag to kind of logically structure what this is about. So I'm going to use a paragraph tag with a class. And I'm going to simply call this site title for my class name. And then I'm going to put sample website. That way it just kind of sticks out for us. Other things I'll typically have inside of a header might be a search form and I can create a, a form tag and we'll look at those later on. Another thing I can put in is a navigation tag and a navigation tag allows me to kind of group different links that we're going to have that will link out to other pages. So a navigation tag is just nav and you'll notice that it has a closing tag that goes with it. And inside of it, I can just have a series of links. Now we haven't looked at links just yet. So I'm just going to put uh, a blank space here and kind of put a dot, dot, dot. I can have other things in there. I can, sometimes you'll see lists, but we haven't talked about what lists are just yet. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to have my header with a paragraph tag, a site title, and a navigation tag that's going to be filled in later. I can once again put in other things like maybe a site catchphrase that you might have if we wanted a list of volume or a date or anything like that. We could put that in there later. We're not needing this just yet. I'm going to save this, come back to my web page example, reload it, and you see the basics of where we're starting. Now, right now we haven't defined a CSS class for our site title. We haven't defined CSS for a header. So we can go in and do that and get it to start to look very different from what we see. So I'm going to come back to my page here and I'm going to go to my styles. Now, a lot of times inside my style sheet, what I like to do is kind of group and organize things together. So 
So I'm going to put a comment, my comments in CSS, start with a slash and then a star or asterisk if you prefer. And it's just shift eight on your keyboard. And I'm going to call this my header section, or I might call this something like my page header section. This is just so I can work and organize my CSS file together. Now with a CSS file that's only got, you know, 20 or 30 lines of code, it's not difficult to keep straight. But when you start working with complex websites, you might have a CSS file that's a thousand or 1500 lines of code or even more. Uh, the biggest one I've ever dealt with, I think was around 4,000 lines of CSS. When you start dealing with that, it gets very complicated and hard to find things. So using comments like this to group and organize your sections of your CSS file makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to have my header and I can either call with header like you see here, because this was a header that was uh, a tag that was used, or I could use a CSS, which was dot page dash header. And remember when I had the class name, it doesn't include the period when I put it inside of the class attribute. But here in my CSS, I start all of my class selectors with a period. In this case, I'm going to choose a background color. And I'll do black, 0, 0, 0. I'll choose a foreground color, which is just color. I'll choose white, which is just FFF. And both of these are the shortcut prefixes. And then I'll have a CSS selector for my page title. In this one, we're going to make a lot of changes. So first thing I'm going to change is my font size. My font size, I'm going to go ahead and make 32 pixels. I want to change my font weight. This is how heavy my text looks, or you might think of it as being bold. And I have some default values of numbers between 100 and 900, and you have to pick one of those numbers. You can't say, well, 250. It doesn't work that way. This is not a real good thing, though, because it's not fully understood by all browsers and all fonts. The font needs to support that weight. In most cases, our fonts simply support bold, standard, or in some cases, lighter. Not always that. So I'm going to put in bold, and then I'm going to also change my font itself. And this is going to be font-family. And the nice thing about using an editor like Visual Studio Code, and there's lots of others out there, is they give you some standard ones that you can work with. So I can look and pick one of these where I can type in my own font name. Now, these particular ones are selected for a couple reasons. Number one, they tend to work together well. And what happens is we do our first one. If we can't find the first one, then we go to the second font on the list, the third font on the list, the fourth font, until we get to the end. Now, hopefully at the end, you can see in this example, we have courier new, courier, and then there's a monospace. The monospace is just use whatever your browser's default is for a monospace font. And our basic fonts are going to be monospace, sans serif, and serif. Now, when trying to pick these, you can kind of go through this list. I'm just going to pick one. And you'll notice it is a sans serif font because the last item in the list says sans dash serif that is our default browser font in this case i'm going to save my style sheet when i reload you notice there's a difference with our header but the site title did not change so let's go back to our source code real quick i have page title here and on sample title you'll notice that i have site title and so we want to make sure we keep those the same they have to match just because I had something that's similar or close doesn't mean it's going to work. And so I want to come over here to site title. I want to keep that as my class name. So I'll come over here to my CSS file, change that to site title. 
And now when I redo it, you'll notice that it looks much better. So this was just an example of how it resized it for me. It changed the color, changed the font, and I might go eh, 32 pixels that I might want it bigger. I might want it smaller. It's easy to change inside my CSS. So for example, I might go ahead and say, you know what? I want this to be 60 pixels. Then I come here and reload this and you'll notice it's much larger. Now you'll notice it's going to push my text below it down and I have a little bit of extra text space up here at the top. We'll look at how to fix that a little bit later on when we start talking about our margins and paddings and other attributes of our CSS. But for now we get to see the starting of a basic text like this. Now there's some other things that I can do if I want to start to align things, uh, maybe make things centered. I can start to change some other elements to it. If I don't like this colors, I can change that. So there's a lot that I can do with my CSS and my page header simply by adding a header tag. And this is just used to group and organize our information. Now, grouping and organizing our information is useful for two different purposes. The first purpose is it helps us organize our information and we can group things together inside of blocks. And if we look in our page header, if I come back to my HTML page, I can see that here's my header, but what's nice is I can come over here to my line numbers and I can minimize this and it collapses it down. So now I'm not having to look at a bunch of code that I don't necessarily want to. The second thing that's nice is that a lot of our search engines now are looking for these organizational tags. And it provides hints for them to know what pages should they look at, what pages should they not look at, where should they give more time and emphasis on, and organizing our content so they can be indexed and then searchable by search engines. So we want to use these organizational tags when we can to provide extra information like you see here.